You got a frying pan? Want to make delicious, simple snacks? Well, here's how. For the first one, take yourself a piece of sliced bread and roll it out as flat as you can with a rolling pin. Then carefully slice up some cheese, nice and thinly, and arrange it on the bread. It really doesn't matter if there's gaps. And if you like, you can also add a thin piece of ham. Then starting from the bottom, roll it all up into a nice tight roll like this. Next, we're going to warm up our frying pan, and I'm using a spoonful of this organic coconut oil. It's solid at room temperature, but it melts into a nice cooking oil with heat. I made five of these bread rolls and placed them into the pan. After a couple of minutes, carefully rotate them all, and you should see they've started to crisp up on the bottom. We need to rotate them every couple of minutes, so they're cooked all the way around. And once they're nice and golden, they're ready to serve. Stack them up onto a plate, and they're great for sharing with friends. Have them for lunch or something. And if I tear one apart, you can see the delicious melted stringy cheese and ham centre. And they go really well served with a dip, like this guacamole, or sour cream and chive. And the coconut oil gives the bread a beautiful flavour. For this one, I'm taking three bowls, and I'm tipping a handful of flour in the first one. I'm also adding a little Cajun seasoning, and some salt and pepper. Then give it all a mix together. Next, I'm cracking an egg into the second bowl, then adding a splash of milk, and beating them together with a fork too. In the final bowl, I'm tipping in these breadcrumbs. I used shop-bought breadcrumbs for ease, but you could of course make your own. For this one, I'm going to be using this smaller, deeper frying pan, and I'm pouring in cooking oil so it's about an inch deep. Then gently heat it up. Next, take a ball of mozzarella and cut it into slices about a centimetre thick. We don't want them to be too thin. Then dip the piece into the flour bowl and give it a good coating. Once it's nicely covered, transfer it into the egg and milk bowl, and make sure it gets a good layer of that all over. Then finally, coat it thoroughly with the breadcrumbs, and sit it to one side. We need to do the same with all of our mozzarella slices. A bit like a production line. And you might find it best to use one hand for the dry flour and breadcrumb stages, and the other hand for the wet egging stage. This should help to stop your fingers getting too messed up. Once you've done them all, you can see they look really good. But if you want to make the breadcrumb layer even thicker, just dip it back into the egg again, and coat it in the breadcrumbs for a second time. This will help to build up a really nice thick layer. When they're all ready, go ahead and carefully lower them into the oil. I'm using metal tongs. They should only take a minute or two to cook, and when they're golden brown, they're ready to take out and serve. I'm serving mine with a little side salad, and a dish of sweet chilli dipping sauce. Be careful because they are really hot, so you should let them cool down a little before you break into them. There may be a little moisture from the cheese. And you can see how beautiful and stringy they are. Pretty cool, huh? Absolutely delicious. The breadcrumb coating is thick and crispy, and they taste amazing. If you're enjoying this and you're new here, you might want to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you get notified every time I launch a new video. And if you want to help support the channel, you can become a member and get access to perks. Just click the join button for more details. If you've got any leftover boiled potatoes, you can cut them up into wedges like this. And we're going to make a delicious seasoning to coat them with. Add a handful of flour into the bowl, then I added a tablespoon of paprika, some dried oregano, and a little bit of salt. Next I poured in a little water, and mixed it all together to make a marinade. Then place in your wedges, and carefully make sure they're all coated. Leave them to sit for half an hour, then fry them off in some oil, just like we did with the breaded mozzarella. Do be careful with the hot oil. Leave them to fry for about five minutes, and when they're golden, remove them from the pan. I put them onto kitchen paper to help remove any excess oil, and they're very hot, so do go careful. But the marinade gives them a really flavoursome coating, and they go great with a salsa dip. 
or whatever you prefer. For the next one, I took a couple of slices of bread and chopped them into cubes like this. Then break a couple of eggs into a bowl, add a splash of milk and whisk them together. Next I grated up some cheese, added a small handful into the bowl and mixed it in. I'm also adding some herbs. Then drop in your bread cubes and mix them in to all that cheesy eggy goodness so it really soaks in. Then after a minute or so, carefully tip them into your frying pan and gently cook them on a low heat. You'll need to turn them around every minute or two to cook them on all sides. When they're all cooked, tip them out onto a plate and we've got these delicious cheesy eggy bread bites. If you like, add some pepper and salt and they're great to munch just like they are. Or you could have them to accompany something else. Next I'm going to show you how to make my amazing porridge pancakes. I filled up a bowl full, which I know is 200 grams of oats, then transferred it into a blender. Give it a whiz to make our own oat flour. Next pour in 200 millilitres of milk into a jug and break in an egg. Then whisk it all together. Then tip in your oat flour and steadily mix it in. If it's a bit too thick and stodgy, you may need to add more milk. And if you'd like your porridge pancakes to have a little more wholesome texture, pour in a handful of whole oat flakes and stir that into the mixture too. And it's ready to cook. I'm using coconut oil again for this recipe because it gives a beautiful flavour. Just pour your mixture into the pan and if you need to, spread it out a little. As it cooks, you'll see it getting darker on the top. Then flip it over and cook the other side. And when it's cooked on both sides, it's ready to serve. I'm serving mine as a double stack, topped with slices of strawberry, bananas and blueberries. And instead of adding maple syrup, I'm drizzling over some nice organic honey. These make a fantastic dessert or breakfast. Or just make them for a snack. They taste a bit more wholesome than regular pancakes. And I definitely recommend trying them. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you want to see more, you can click on the links or take a look at my YouTube channel page. Stay safe, have fun, and as always, thanks for watching.